Fun fact about this year's opening ceremonies in the Olympics, over 10,000 Russians reportedly auditioned to sing or dance at them, the most popular song of choice being Gangnam Style by Psy, which to me, warrants a sigh. Coming up in sports, the Raptors wave goodbye to 2013 in style, see if they can continue their winning ways against league's best Indiana Pacers. And while the weather outside was frightful, the hockey, oh, it was delightful. We've got full highlights of the Winter Classic from the Leafs and Red Wings coming up. Not exactly the fanfare of LeBron James' decision to sign with Miami, but Andrew Wiggins' commitment to Kansas is expected to have an equally rippling effect on college basketball this season. It's a team that uh, can't do anything but win gold in this country. If you win anything but gold, you're deemed a failure. So he's mm -hmm. got to take the players that he thinks gives him the best chance yeah. to win gold, and I think that's what he did. What were your thoughts? Were you concerned? Uh, I thought Moyes was trying to get fired, first of all. You see, <laughs> you see Giggs in there and you see Ferdinand in there and you think, how are these guys going to keep up with the team with the pace and the speed of Olympia? The NBA trade deadline is today at 3 p.m. Eastern and so far the biggest deal we've had this week was Facebook buying WhatsApp for a cool $16 billion, which is roughly what Kobe Bryant's set to make over the next two years empty. That's how Pavel Datuk described his feeling moments after Russia's loss to Finland. It's a perfect word because that's how the Russian men's hockey team will leave Sochi. Now, you thought that was nice. Check this out. Griffin, Crawford, Griffin, slam dunk. That is a vintage fast break for the Clippers. But this was Terrence Ross's night. Look at how deep he drills this three-pointer from. That's from Mississauga. This game tied up at 93. It's hard to fathom that much pressure on a kid born in 1995, but there wasn't this much fanfare when I decided to go to university. <laughs> what makes Andrew Wiggins so special as a basketball talent? It's a great question. You already know the Seahawks are Super Bowl champs, so let's take a look at some of the numbers. Not stats, but tweets. First, total Super Bowl-related tweets yesterday, 24.9 million. The best of which, in my opinion, came from pizza company DiGiorno, where they said, yo, this game is like DiGiorno pizza because it was done in 20 minutes. Honestly, pretty brilliant. The basketball, where LeBron James and his protective mask have garnered a lot of attention, but it hasn't taken away from his abilities. Against the Knicks yesterday, 31 points, 4 rebounds, 4 steals, then an appearance on Jimmy Fallon, where he played a little waste paper basketball, which is probably what he feels like when he's playing the Knicks anyways. His play also prompted a world-class headline by the New York Daily News today, which read, Masked Man Mauls Knicks. Just fantastic. Did you hear the story about the lady from Hamilton who bought a ticket for a recent $50 million lottery and won after lottery reps tracked her down despite misplacing said ticket and not knowing for months? It's kind of like the Warriors Raptors last night. Now give me a sec. G State showed up with their proverbial ticket, misplaced their game for almost three quarters and were down 27 at one point in the third. But then the ever so kind Raptors gave it back, resulting in the single biggest blown lead in franchise history. Look, I like pizza a lot. I'd actually go out on a limb and say it's my favorite food, but when I'm driving, priority tends to be in the road. And when you're making as much dough as Nate Burleson, it should be too. Apparently not. The Detroit Lions said today that Burleson broke his arm in a single car accident last night, and according to police, it happened when his car hit a median as he tried to stop two pizza boxes from falling off his front seat. There's no timetable for his return, but it's apparent he'll miss a big slice of his team's action going forward. Okay, sorry, that was a bit cheesy. Before we get into what's happening today, let's recognize a couple celebrities turning 50. First, Brad Pitt. Yes, Brad Pitt's 50. Let's reflect and hate on that one for a second. Secondly, happy 50th to Charles Oakley. Let's not hate on that one purely out of fear. Now, Oakley's relevant today not only because he turns the big 5-0, but because he's been involved with all four NBA teams on Sportsnet tonight. It's like our gift to him. In October of 2000, Christina Aguilera's jam, Come On Over, was topping the Billboard charts. I know you remember it. Fittingly, it's how the Bruins feel when they play the Oilers. Edmonton hasn't beaten Boston since that song was number one. They'll try tonight on Sportsnet Oilers at 7.30 Mountain Time. Yesterday, a TV special ran that showed magician David Blaine impressing a bunch of celebrities with mind-blowing magic tricks. It didn't explain, though, how the 76 have somehow beat the Heat, Rockets, and Bulls so far this season, but if there were ever a sign that magic were real, it's that. 11 days ago, Joey Chestnut downed 9 pounds of shrimp in 8 minutes. Impressive? I'm going to preview 4 hockey games in 20 seconds. On Sportsnet East at 7 Eastern, the Sens play Florida, looking to win in Ottawa for the first time in 4 years. Sportsnet Pacific at 5 Pacific has Canucks, Stars, Vancouver points in 10 of their last 11. Oilers, Avalanche, Edmonton looking to snap a 4 game losing streak at 7.30 Mountain Time on Sportsnet. Oilers, finally Calgary, Detroit on Sportsnet West at 5 Mountain Time. But could you honestly, as Here's a United fan, say you want to see <laughs> Liverpool win? I would not be mad if they won the title. It took a <laughs> wow. long time to convince myself Twitter hate, that. Twitter hate. Yeah, here it comes, but 
I'm just happy for Steven Gerrard and for that team around him, for the history of that. You talked about the 25 years, and it's a great story. Just